Welcome to Radflix 1985. Finally, a good fucking year. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe yeah, Pinionated. Today on Radflix, we're rewarding the raddest movies of 1985. Forget what the critics said. What is a rad flick? A rad flick is a movie that has stood the test of time. All of these movies are bangers. 1985, great year for movies. We have a panel of six normal Canadians who watch an average amount of movies, maybe a little more than average. It's a point system, top three from each category. Raddest comedy, raddest sci-fi, action, adventure, raddest drama, raddest horror, most watched, raddest movie overall, and raddest family movie night. For 1985, the winners of the, the Oscars out of Africa won Best Picture, Best Director, Sidney Pollock, William Hurt, Kiss of the Spider Woman, Best Actor, Geraldine Page, The Trip to Bountiful, Best Actress. In 1985, the song We Are the World debuted. That's There's a cool new documentary out about that. On March the 31st, WrestleMania debuts in 1985. Main event featuring Hulk Hogan, Partnered up with Mr. T versus Paul Orndorff and Rowdy Roddy Piper. In 1985, there was also Live Aid. And the one people remember from that is Queen, of course. But also the fact that Led Zeppelin got back together with Phil Collins as the drummer. In 1985, they found the Titanic. And also in 1985, they had Farm Aid. The lineup on that one is ridiculous too. Nintendo Entertainment System debuts in New York. I have a few games behind me today ninja turtles friday the 13th and goonies 2 orson wells passes away director of citizen kane which is sort of the critics favorite movie of all time so the first category for raddest flicks 1985 raddest horror suspense all right so the finalists raddest horror are fright night directed by tom holland this is a such a an 80s movie <laughs> and it's about you know next door there's this family and there are these people that are possibly killing people and only the one kid realizes it and everybody else like come on it's okay johnny it's okay fright night is a finalist return of the living dead directed by dan o'bannon clue gulliger and James Karen, a military mistake leads to a zombie apocalypse. You know, there's people coming out of the graveyard, that sort of stuff. Next finalist is Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. This is the one where he's kind of tormenting the new kid on the block, Jesse. Freddy's haunting his dreams. I remember thinking this one was almost scarier than the original when I was younger, but on rewatch, I'm not sure. I still think the original takes the cake. I just love watching Freddy movies. Same with Jason. I like those movies too. Next finalist is Dawn of the Dead. Sort of a follow-up from George A. Romero of Night of the Living Dead. Got that uh, grindhouse sort of opening. Sorry, this is after Dawn of the Dead, then Day of the Dead. Also a finalist for 1985. Gary Busey, Corey Haim star in Silver Bullet. This one's from the Master, Master of Mystery and Suspense, Stephen King. This is based on a novel, but a werewolf in a small town. I'm assuming in Maine or somewhere over that way. And the winner of Rad is goes to The Return of the Living Dead. Certified Rad, runner-up, Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. To be honest with you, that was my tops. I kind of really like the cheesy uh, Day of the Dead as well over Return of the Living Dead. Man, there's a lot of dead going on in 1985. Next category we're going to do is Raddest Drama. First finalist for Raddest Drama 1985 goes to The Color Purple, directed by Steven Spielberg. He's been mentioned on every single Radflix episode thus far. We started with 1980. Remember to check in the description as well. There's a playlist of all the trailers for every movie mentioned in this episode. This one stars Danny Glover and Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, Oprah Winfrey as well. It's an epic tale of African-American women in the 20th, early 20th century. Next finalist for Raddest Drama 1985, and this is why I love our panel of normal people, it's Rocky IV, directed by Sylvester Stallone. What an epic drama. I mean, come on, give it up for Rock. Also starring Dolph Lundgren. Those sit-ups, those sit-ups that Rocky does, I mean, the the... Just the angle they shoot that from. No better montages than Rocky. I'm carrying those logs through the snow. Shout out to the panel for, for this nomination. Next up, 1985 uh, comes from one of my absolute personal favorites, John Hughes. Uh, the movie is The Breakfast Club, starring Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson. 
It's a movie about uh, five high school kids from different cliques or a group of high school kids from different cliques spending a Saturday together in detention. You know, John Hughes having this really successful career and I'm sure it would have happened either way with or without this movie, but this was really the catalyst that took him to the next level. Next up is it Mr. Green? Is it Colonel Mustard? Is it Miss White? Is it Tim Curry? Is it Eileen Brennan? Professor Plum? Mrs. Peacock? The Butler, possibly? Directed by Jonathan Lynn. The movie is Clue. Mystery, Murder, and Madness. Clue is a finalist for Best Drama. St. Elmo's Fire. This must be uh, Caro's pick for sure. St. Elmo's Fire. The next finalist uh, goes to a Martin Scorsese movie. This time it's After Hours. Following Griffin Dunn around here, there, and everywhere. Rosanna Arquette is also really great in this movie. Next up, directed by Peter Weir, starring Kelly McGillis and Harrison Ford in Witness. This one's pretty cool. I actually watched this. Got, well, I watched this like 10 years ago now. Just yesterday. It had to be at least 10 years ago because I'm pretty sure I rented it. Witness. And the last finalist, a dystopian satire where a bureaucrat becomes the enemy of the state. Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Terry Gilliam, of course, from uh, Monty Python and also director of a million incredible movies. One of the best directors really of all time. One of my favorites anyways. Terry Gilliam is not afraid to be different, take a risk. And in this movie, there's so many things to me that just come off as genius. I remember watching this year, probably probably around 2002 or 2003, and just thinking of all the different things that he had predicted would happen in, two, in 1985. Little parts of this movie really kind of come to fruition. Uh, Robert De Niro has a great role in this movie as well. Kim Greist, Jonathan Price, Michael Palin, probably my favorite Python. It's one of my very favorite artsy fartsy movies. And the winner of Raddus Drama for 1985 goes to John Hughes and The Breakfast Club. The runner up for 1985 Raddus Drama goes to Sylvester Stallone and Rocky IV. Certified Rad Rocky IV, you're getting some respect. Almost first place. <laughs> In Radis Drama. Or the third place for Radis Drama of 1985 goes to a drama. It's The Color Purple from Steven Spielberg. Next category is Action Sci Fi Adventure from director Mark L. Lester. The movie is Commando, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. I haven't seen this movie in so long. He couldn't get more guns on Arnold if he tried. I'm pretty sure this is like his record for most guns held in the same at the same time. He had a like a gun with a grenade launcher in the bottom. You remember Sally when I promised to kill you last? I lied. The trailers for some of these action ones, you get that voice where it sounds like Pablo Francisco doing the fake movie guy's voice. Next nominee for Action Sci-Fi Adventure goes to the follow-up to Romancing the Stone, once again starring Michael Douglas and Danny DeVito and Kathleen Turner. It's Jewel of the Nile. This time they're romancing a brand new stone, the Jewel of the Nile. 1985 Rad Flicks nominee for Action Sci-Fi Adventure, Robert Zemeckis directed Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd. Done a Robert Zemeckis episode on this channel. Few movies mean more to me, honestly. It's one of the best movies ever made. One of the greatest movies of the 80s. When we do our 80s wrap up, this one will definitely be coming up again. But it's one of the very few movies that does time travel well. And time travel is like kind of a hard thing to do in a movie. For some reason, it works in this one. And Robert Zemeckis has a way of that kind of magic. Is making, you you know, stretching the imagination or just kind of bending reality. George P. Cosmatos directed Rambo First Blood Part 2. Once again, you, you think that you thought Arnie had a lot of guns on him in Rambo or in uh, Commando. Wait till you check out this guy, Sly Stallone in, in Rambo 2. Channeling uh, Bronson in this one. It's him versus an army. Rambo 2. So in this category, we also get a shout out for Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Terry Gilliam movies are often considered an adventure movie, a lot of these ones anyways. The world had been through a trial by fire and only the greatest warriors survived. Uh, from George Miller, George Ogilvy, it's Mad Max, Beyond Thunderdome. He was the one they called mad. Now, first of all, Tina Turner owns in this show, so I want to give... Props to Tina Turner for really making her part work. The whole cage match scene, the Thunderdome and stuff like that is pretty amazing when you're a little kid and you see this stuff. I really liked Mad Max when I was a kid. So yeah, anyways, props to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, my favorite was The Road Warrior, but I probably saw Beyond Thunderdome the most just because it was that cool element and everybody knew it was cool. Next, 
finalist for action sci-fi adventure goes to Tom Cruise and Legend. This is such a cool kind of, you know, labyrinth style, mystical, weird movie with unicorns and all kinds of crap. And uh, this is just before Tom Cruise did Top Gun. Next up, we get our second James Bond nominee or finalist. It's A View to Kill, directed by John Glenn. This one has Christopher Walken with Roger Moore. A View to Kill is one of the best, honestly. I love Christopher Walken. And the last finalist from action, adventure, legend, extraordinaire, Jackie Chan. We have Police Story from 1985. Now, if you haven't watched the old Jackie Chan movies like Police Story and Drunken Master and Super Cop, you really should. Jackie Chan was the man living in Hong Kong making these movies, and that guy did all those stunts. Every single one of them just makes me cringe, but it's so much fun to watch because you know Jackie Chan's going to live. So just keep that in mind. He lived. And the winner of Raddest Action Adventure Sci-Fi 1985 goes to Back to the Future. Was there ever a doubt? Second Raddest Action Adventure movie of 1985 goes to Commando. Third third place for 1985's Raddest Action Adventure Sci-Fi goes to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Next up, Raddest Comedy of 1985. The finalists are Brewster's Millions. Directed by Walter Hill, starring Richard Pryor and John Candy. Brewster, he has to spend $30 million to make $300 million or something like that. So it's just a movie about him spending money and he can't tell anybody why. It's so much fun. Shout out to Walter Hill for being a person that can make one of those movies. And you make Richard Pryor and John Candy both look great. John Candy playing in one of his classic roles and Richard Pryor being his normal self. Next finalist for Raddest Comedy 1985 goes to The Breakfast Club. So that's John Hughes again. Next nominee for Raddest Comedy, directed by Richard Donner, 1985. We're going to the Goonies. It's on one of our Goonies. And we're big Goonies nuts. You'll see copper bones over my shoulder here when I turn off this background. But like I said, I've driven down to Astoria in the Oregon coast uh, near Cannon Beach. I think it's called E. Coli State Park. And that's where the restaurant scene was. If you're in the area and you love the Goonies, definitely definitely check it out it's really cool Corey feldman sean austin uh data a eh, chunk slot hey you guys baby ruth josh brolin chester copperpot booby traps the pinches of power <laughs> slick shoes yo mikey gotta go to the bathroom why don't we just put chocolate all over the floor and let chunk eat his way through orv bullet holes up next, we get one of Woody Allen's classics, The Purple Rose of Cairo. This one's starring Mia Farrow. I have a Woody Allen list on this channel as well, so check out the channel below. Woody Allen movies, I think they're awesome. Next finalist for Raddest Comedy goes to this guy here, Paul Rubens, Rest in Peace, Huey's Big Adventure, written by Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman. Rest in Peace to both of those guys. Legends. The breakout movie as well for Tim Burton. He directed this. 1985 is so strong for some of my absolute favorite movies of all time. And this is another one of them. Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure comes in in the final as a finalist for greatest comedy or raddest comedy of 1985. This one features Twisted Sister. It features Wayne from The Wonder Years. There'll be some Wonder Years talk coming up uh, in 1988 when the, that series kicks off. Be sure to tell them. Large Marge sent ya. What? What? Up next, 1985, starring Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo. We go back on vacation. This time to Europe. European vacation from National Lampoons. In the mind of John Hughes. Chevy Chase in his prime. He's definitely owning in the mid-80s because he's also another finalist in the same category, Raddest. Comedy of 1985. And this time it's Fletch. So yeah, so once again, Chevy Chase, Fletch. I remember this one just dying and laughing the first time I watched it. I really like Chevy's style of humor. Kind of like asshole humor in a sense. Props to Chevy Chase, you're certified rad. Two movies back to back for raddest comedy of one of the greatest years for movies, 1985. With Fletch and European Vacation. Another nominee for a great raddest comedy, 1985, is Clue. We already mentioned that one a little bit earlier. But that one's so freaking good too with tim curry another finalist is police academy 2 not so steve gutenberg better off dead starring john cusack 1985 another finalist for raddest comedy of the year 
Directed by Savage, Steve Holland. Even your younger brother does better than you do. Dark sort of comedy. I remember like Three O'Clock High and these other sort of movies like that. This is one of those ones. It also has Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. And the winner for 1985's Raddest Comedy goes to Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Pee-wee Herman in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Directed by Tim Burton, written by Paul Rubens, who's Pee Wee Herman, and Phil Hartman. Raddest comedy of 1985, which is a huge year for these great movies. The runner-ups go to, uh, in second place, the runner-up is Back to the Future for Raddest comedy of 1985. And third place goes to The Goonies, my boys, The Goonies. Goonies never say die. Third raddest comedy of 1985. There's no basement in the Alamo. Next category is Family Movie Night. Radflix Family Movie Night. Here are the finalists. Um, European Vacation. John Hughes uh, Road Again, Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo. European Vacation is actually my least favorite. I own all the Euro- all the vacation movies. Come to like Vegas Vacation more than European Vacation. Nick Papa Giorgio, that stuff kind of cracks me up. European Vacation is a finalist. Up next, directed by Rod Daniel, Teen Wolf, James Hampton, and Michael J. Fox. This is the one where a teenager discovers he has the ability to transform into a werewolf. All of a sudden, he's a wicked basketball player. Next finalist for Family Movie Night is also starring Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future. He's on fire 1985. Family Ties is also going on at that time. So I'm pretty sure they shot most of Back to the Future at nighttime or so. He had some crazy schedule. Robert Zemeckis. I'm a huge Robert Zemeckis fan. Uh, check out his list. It's on his channel. If you're not familiar with all of his movies, you should be. I'm sure you love Forrest Gump, Back to the Future's Contact, and I really like Flight. There's a bunch of them on there. Next up, Family Movie Night. We're going with The Breakfast Club. We're not exactly like model parents or anything like that. Uh, you know, we're submitting to a show called Rad Flicks. We're not exactly splitting the atom around here. Low, Low on, facts, on facts, high, high on, opinions. on opinions. Next finalist for Family Movie Night. Once again, Richard Donner's The Goonies. Corey Feldman is Mouth. You got Mouth, Data, Chunk, Sloth, Mikey. Brand looking for one-eyed Willie's gold. They're all going to get booted out of the goondocks in Astoria, Oregon. What a beautiful town. If you haven't been there before, that's also where they film kindergarten cop and short drive down from where we live here in Canada. Uh, next up legend comes up again for family movie night, 1985. That's that mystical one. Uh, we were talking about earlier with uh, Tom Cruise right before Top Gun and return to Oz. That's also another one that came out in 1985. That's a finalist for family movie night. Directed by Walter Murch. And the last finalist for 1985 Family Movie Night goes to Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. Once again, directed by Tim Burton. Pee Wee has his bike stolen. And it's unbelievable because he's got the, the world's biggest bike lock on it. Talking to his girlfriend, Dottie. I think it's his girlfriend, his partner, Dottie. She works at the bike shop. I remember getting a little bit creeped out by the nightmare scenes and stuff like that when I was a little guy. And the raddest family movie of 1985 fit for Family Movie Night goes to Back to the future raddest family movie of 1985 i don't know i just think about this one as being a movie that i watched with my family so many times even when i was a little kid is the first vhs i ever remember seeing going into a vcr and then the movie starting up i love back to the future the trilogy runner-ups go to the goonies uh, Richard Donner and uh, Steven Spielberg. The story for The Goonies was actually written by Chris Columbus. Chris Columbus got his start by writing Gremlins. His directorial debut, I believe, was Adventures in Babysitting. Then Chris Columbus went on to direct, you know, Home Alone and Harry Potter. Really cool interview too, if you ever want to check. If you're ever watching uh, interviews with directors and stuff like that, Chris Columbus just seems like the coolest guy. Also a Chris Columbus episode on this channel. And the third place for Raddest Family Movie of 1985 goes to Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf got third raddest family movie for 1985. Okay, so most watched. Next category is most watched. For myself, the third most watched for myself is Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure, uh, Back to the Future, and most watched for me from 1985 is The Goonies. For Ian, A View to Kill, The Goonies, and his most watched from 1985 is Back to the Future. Caro, Caro's runner-up is The Goonies, most watched Back to the Future. Bob's most watched. Third is Teen Wolf. Second most watched is Rocky IV. And most watched is Back to the Future. Third place, Back to the Future for Jess. Rocky IV in second place. And The Goonies, most watched. And for Joe 2, Back to the Future. 
Rocky Four, and most watched is The Goonies. Uh, Joe Two and Jess both have the same most watched list. And so the winners for most watched, Radflix, 1985. Third, uh, the winner is Back to the Future. Runner up, most watched is The Goonies. And third is Rocky Four. Raddest movie of 1985. The finalists for Raddest movie of 1985 are The Color Purple, directed by Steven Spielberg, The Breakfast Club from John Hughes, The Goonies, from Richard Donner, Back to the Future, by Robert Zemeckis, Rocky IV, Rocky IV, from director Sylvester Stallone, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, directed by Tim Burton, and the winner goes to Back to the Future, as the raddest movie of 1985, directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, Second raddest movie of 1985 goes to The Goonies, directed by Richard Donner. Honors, third place honor, third place goes to Pee-wee's Big Adventure, directed by Tim Burton. Back to the Future, Goonies, and Pee-wee, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. There's no finalists that will represent me better. That's it. So that's been another episode of Rad Flicks. Next episode is obviously 1986. Let me know what your finalists are in the comments below or maybe on discord check out the patreon channel remember to live and let live be normal these are rad flicks forget all that other noise watch some something easy to watch respect to the panel respect to lauren falls for the uh, music on the outro great bass player out of toronto canada uh, jazz musician she has cds and records and all that stuff available so check out lauren falls thank you i'm sorry i'm a little low on facts and high, high on opinions, on opinions. Respect to the raddest movie of 1985, Back to the Future, 1.21 gigawatts ahead of the competition, and we'll catch you on the next one.